So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we're definitely being more super. Um, currently out in the States, uh, it's yet to come over to the UK, but I've had special uh, access to the show. It's Superman and Lois, and we've got a great guest. It's Superman's son. It's Alec Garvin. Alex, welcome to the show, my man. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure, my friend. And do you know what? It is so exciting to have you on because... I don't know if you're aware, but it's been 24 years, 24 years since we saw the last live action Superman series on our TV, 24. So that was before you was, you know, in this world, uh, because you're only 16. Am I right in saying you're 16? I'm uh, 17, close enough. 17. And you're living the dream. You really, really are. Uh, how's, How's things going at the moment with with filming because you're filming today so thank you so much for taking the time uh, to come away and chat to uh, a nice Englishman about your wonderful show how is everything going with filming currently filming is magical I'm out here at uh, Cloverdale which is where we have Smallville so they built us an entire fake town it is absolutely magical I would show you guys if I wouldn't get in trouble but basically <laughs> it's just Disney World but I get paid to be here that is awesome. And, of course, where you're filming is where they used to film Smallville, the series, as well, uh, which is quite awesome and keeping with the uh, tradition of Superman. Um, so I've got to say, um, currently we're on a break from Superman and Lois, and it's back on our screens on the 18th of May. What a way to finish a break, Alex. What a way to finish. So you play <laughs> Jordan Kent, uh, which is Superman's son. Uh, along with with your brother as well, Jonathan Kent. Um, but, you know, what did you think of the last episode, episode five, leaving us on that cliffhanger? That was awesome. Oh, I thought it was absolutely gnarly. Uh, I knew that there was going to be a long break after five when we were filming it. So the fact that they left the cliffhanger, my face getting bludgeoned in, I thought that was absolutely marvelous. And uh, we see the reaction to that and what um, actions come after that. It sets into motion many things that go on to place. Just like how in any story, a small domino hits a bigger domino, hits a bigger domino, and eventually you have a castle falling down. So (laughs) it's really amazing to really see those dominoes take effect and you really start to see that more in six and seven. I've got to say in the first five episodes, it's definitely set in you know, things up for amazing things. And of course, with you as well. Why do you think the show so far has had such an amazing, you know, reception? Because it it has, it's had so many positive reviews and people are shouting from the roofs. Why do you think and feel it's done so well? I think something resonates with people that a Superman they can understand and relate to. I think Tyler is doing an absolutely beautiful job at Clark Kent. And I think that's a big part of all of this. But not only that, I think the real foundation is the writing. Uh, mm-hmm. Our showrunner and head writer, Todd Helbing, is uh, someone who is very genuinely kind and has genuinely a lot of values that are very well imposed into the show. Not only that, I really truly believe that because of him and everyone else on the team and everyone here, there is so little here that assumes that the audience is less intelligent than people making it, which I find is something that alienates people from a lot of shows that they watch. There is an assumption, I believe, in the writing that the audience is smarter than we are. And we, you know, that's awesome. And I think that's really just a step forward. That lack of, um, just that talking to as an equal. I think this show does very well. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, Superman has got so many fans. I mean, I'm such a Superman fan that I've got two little girls, one seven and one three. My seven-year-old is called Lois, and my three-year-old is called Kara. And you'll like this one. I've got a stepson. He's 19 years old, and his name's Jordan. So I've got a full set. I've got a full set. You've got a full set? And I've got a cat called Clark. So good, good. So I'm glad Tyler's character is relegated to the cat. 
Uh, he'll, he'll exactly, like exactly. <laughs> does it? He does his own thing. He goes off. Uh, he's very selfish, which which I'm sure Tyler isn't. But uh, but yeah. <laughs> so after one episode, the show is renewed for a second season. You know that that must be absolutely amazing. You know news to get when you've just had one episode aired. You know, uh, I was emailing folks at WB that we're the first show I know of that we had more seasons listed online than episodes. <laughs> at that point in time, there was one episode out, and we got renewed for a second season. And I think that's mainly, again, because there was an assumption, I think, back there even when they read the scripts that what this show was. The, the mm. writing is just phenomenal. Mm. You know, I was... Uh, remembering when they picked it up for season one and it was while I was still screen testing for this role. So while I was actually at WB every day and sitting on the friend's couch, waiting to go in for my interviews, <laughs> which was That's pretty fun. Awesome. Um, I was hearing all the talk and hearing that they were just so impressed with the script. And then when I got it, after I got the role, I was just blown away by what they did. That's awesome. That is awesome. And, and you know, it just shows how many fans out there, uh, you know, the show has got and, and how much trust they must have in that writing and in that development of the character. Because, you know, 24 years ago, we had Lo Lo Lois and Clark with Dean Cain. And I've got to say, Tyler, a super Superman for me, I mean, I met him last year in person. And yeah. he was such a lovely man. And I did try and get it out of him because there were rumours of a Superman series. And he kept on... And it was just after the crossover. And he just wouldn't... He wouldn't He wouldn't tell me anything. And then all of a sudden it gets announced. So the casting process for this show must have been absolutely off the charts. I mean, what did it look like? Where did you see the casting? How did, how did it come about? And uh, please let us know how you got the part of Jordan. Uh, I went in for Jonathan, actually, and it was a whole speech about – I was talking to the football coach saying, I'm just a freshman. I shouldn't uh, be replacing the seniors. I'm just that good at football. I put the script down midway through talking, and I just said, I'm sorry. I'm I'm not going to waste your time anymore. I'm not going to waste my time anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm not right for this. I've never held a football in my life. Uh you know, uh, you know, I'm an actor. I don't know how many actors have. <laughs> so, um, well, she said, come to the back and I have another script for you. And this script I connected with immediately. It was a kid talking to his principal saying that the teacher's not doing the job, their job. And that's why I'm acting out. And why am I in trouble for that? It was, there was an immediate connection because I think I've had that conversation with some principals many times. <laughs> uh, I have a couple stories where I actually taught a class in a sophomore year, but that's another story. <laughs> um, so I go in, she says, come back tomorrow, go in the next day. And there's that script. I do that. She's like, good. And then I do the next script, which is uh, uh, I'm reaching up for the router. What I decide to do in the room, because I'm, you know, I'm crazy. I go in and <laughs> the chair had arms on it, right? So I go into the room and I start, cl I climb on the chair and then I go in the arms of the chair and then I start, I start surfing. I start going on one side <laughs> of the wall. My mom's in this room, by the way, definitely hearing this story for the first time. And uh, <laughs> so I'm surfing on the chair and She's panning up the camera and it's like, what, what is this kid doing? And she, so I, I get out of the room. I got a call. I went into the screen test and I could go into all of that as well. There was another kid uh, I was going up against and he was just phenomenal and absolutely awesome. And we are still really good friends to this day. And he is going to be a massive star. I am sure. Uh, <laughs> I walked in the room and it was just the handsomer version of me. And I go, Oh wow. So, uh, you know, I, I, you win the handsome contest. <laughs> but we're still really good friends to this day. And, you know, the rest is history. That is awesome. And you've definitely got a long career with Superman and Lois, it being renewed for a second season. And I've got to say, shows like the these last for, for decades, it really, really does, especially because it's around such an iconic character. 
Um, so obviously you've got powers. You know, we've seen so far you develop some powers and the teaser trailer shows a few more powers, which we're very looking forward to. Really, really are. I so want to see you fly and develop and you could be the next Superman. I cannot wait. I really cannot. Um, so obviously you get the part of Jordan Kent. At what point did you find out that you were going to have powers in the show? I found out I had powers relatively soon after mm. I got the role. Uh, it was right as I read the very first draft of the pilot. So this was, I think, February 2020. Oh, what an innocent time. Uh, <laughs> I found out I had laser eyes, and I was absolutely stoked. And I was just, you know, going like this in the mirror a bunch of times. I was hoping something would come out. But mainly it was just my tears. No. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I, I think we've all done that a couple times. I know I have. Yeah. I was a giant fan of Avatar The Last Airbender. I think every kid that was was in the shower at some point going like this with the water. Like, oh, wait, wait. It moved a little too much. I'm a waterbender. I'm a, I'm a... So that, that explains why teenagers spend so much time in the shower is that they're trying to what? pretend to be avatar that that's what i'd like you to think yes yeah 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 <laughs> so that's a good that is a good explanation we'll take that we we will take that jordan my stepson spends literally you know an hour in the shower he makes like an event out of it he really does so uh now now i know what he's doing <laughs> <laughs> because what you know i do have to say i used to hate to shower i never would go in uh, as, a, as a kid i was running around as a dirty little kid and uh, i remember because as soon as you go in the shower it's like this whole commitment it's like you do have to spend an hour and then all of a sudden it feels good oh now i don't want to get out it's just as much work to get in as it is to get out you know yeah so it, it's really a conundrum yeah <laughs> first world problems for max <laughs> That's it. We're talking about Superman and Lois, and now we're talking about showers. This is a great interview. It really is. So, so you're talking about your superpowers, and you're talking about your 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 laser eyes. I've got to say that scene that we first see those la laser eyes is just fantastic. So, how was it from filming that scene to actually seeing the finished article with the amazing special effects that this show has? It was intense. That entire Schuster Mines scene uh, was a two-day event, and it was very far away from the rest of the city. In fact, we had a hotel. It was the only time in which we had a hotel because it was so far away. Uh, it raged on all night, and it was absolutely some of the most fun ex experiences I've ever had in my life. Uh, the director who did the first two episodes, Lee Tolan Krieger, remember that name because he's going to be doing all sorts of crazy movies, I am sure – it was he's just a, such a fantastic genius he can mm. look at that scene on the paper it comes to life in his head then he sees it uh, then he sees the terrain and what they've done what the other departments have done and takes what was in his head and somehow molds it and he, he so he had those that that idea for the push shot all the way down low and uh, that was also Gavin as well Gavin Struthers uh, who was our DP at the time uh, but it was really that relationship with him uh, mm. and also my relationship with Indy that I think really brought through that um, entire time. Also, it was really, really cool because uh, they actually, that fire was real. So they had this bonfire and if, you know, I don't want to get, I don't want to really uh, poke behind the curtain here, but you know, it, it's worth it. Mm. If you look at the edges of the bonfire, you can tell what kind of fire it is, at least in my mind, because it's very sharp flames because mm. it's literally just gas being pumped out of metal tubes that look like wood. So it's burning hot and we would have to walk right by it every shot. And, and Dean, who was the camera at the time, another extreme talent that was working with us at that time, had to be on the other side of the fire. So Indy's hair and side of her face really started getting a little hot there uh, <laughs> when we were walking on by. And th th for that explosion scene, it was absolutely ridiculous. Basically, they dug up the entire area around the fire, put pads underneath, put dirt on top of the pads, then arranged cranes like this. If my head is the fire, you know, the hair even looks like it. The head is the fire. There are cranes 
like this and this going up with wires that connect to people. And they yank the people back and explode the fire at the same time. <laughs> and we're all sitting back. And, you know, this is when I'm new to set. I'm going, whoa! And everyone's looking at me like, oh, shoot. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, the drum shot of it. And then all of that in incredible work by our stunt team. And it's like, it's just like that in the thing. You know, it's just one of the million shots. Like, it's going between space and that. Meanwhile, it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. But I guess that's how these things are between uh, shooting and actually seeing it, aren't they? And it is incredible on the scene, uh, on the screen. And, um, you know, I'm sure there's some amazing stuff yet to come, uh, especially from that teaser trailer. You mentioned Indy that plays Sarah Cushion. And I love that connection between you and her. And, um, you know, it's one of those things that you, 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 you're you guessing, you know, are they going to be friends? Are there going to be more? Are they just going to stay friends? And you're just going to wish that there's more. Uh, me, personally, I think something is definitely growing. Um, Indy's acting in the show is fantastic. You know, the slightest sort of facial expression, you, you, you can read into that. Um, so, obviously, I don't want to ask you if, uh, you know, you're going to hook up as the youngsters say, uh, because I'm sure that you're going to say, well, I can't tell you. Uh, so, that, so that is fine. Um, <clears throat> what I love about your character, though, um, is that at the start of the series, um, you know, your character is, you've got social anxiety. You know, you've got anger management issues and it addresses mental health. Obviously, knowing that your character is going through this and you're a teenager yourself did you do any research regarding you know those sort of mental health issues to you know portray them better on screen it was one of my goals with this character to not only destigmatize de mental health destigmatizing in my mind just meaning exposing people to the idea that it exists and it can exist in a normal environment but also to characterize with it and to use it as a color that I put on the palette that I can paint rather than just being the whole picture. And really, I wanted to make Jordan a person. I wanted to make him have his own willpower, his own love for his family, love for his brother who is protective of him. Uh, and, you know, obviously, the slight, slight crush he has <laughs> on Sarah Cushing. It must be genetic with the Lanas and the Clark and Clarks and the Kents. I, uh, you know, but... Uh, it was really important to me that it was a color and not the entire hue. And as well, I think that environment is such a big issue in that. Um, so as we see the environment start to shift in those first five episodes, especially, and I believe those first five episodes, rather than being a mid-season break, I believe they are a prelude to the entire rest. I mean, I'm a big classical music fan. I'm thinking prelude and a fugue, but like <laughs> they, they are a little bit of a prelude. They introduce the general themes and the general uh, where it's going and kind of have that own little thing in its own little bubble. And what's so beautiful about that is that we really start to see Jordan grow. You see him in the first episode as extremely angry. He's being bullied all the time. He has no friends. His best friend is his mom, which is a conversation I've had with Bitsy many times. Um, and he goes from that to all of a sudden someone understands him and then he gets beat up for it. But then all of a sudden he, he, he's accepted and, and he, and literally from the sky, he's given all these powers and he starts to be able to understand himself better. He starts to realize that he was an alien, not because of his own faults, but because he is literally an alien. And I think a big part of that is contributes to his growth. And a lot of parts of growing is a lot of pain and a lot of adjusting and a lot of becoming different people. I know, at least for me, uh, the environment in which COVID supplied for me, I'll pause just because it is a ring. I'll, I'll back up a bit. I, I know, at least for me, that the environment that COVID caused for me personally changed me a lot as a person. And I feel like a much different person than I was when I first booked this part right before it hit. I was still in school. I, um, I, was, I was seeing my friends every day. It was just that social environment. And when that's taken away for you need to survive, 
that you know that that shifted us all and i feel like we all feel like drastically different foreign people so the same happens i believe to the entire kent family as their environment changes they become different people and they mm. just, i i think i think that's just beautiful again the writing is so good <laughs> like <laughs> the are geniuses over there i i i'm 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 serious about it the other writer who i've met uh, is, is christy um I wish I could say her last name without thinking I'm mispronouncing it, but I can't. Uh, and, and one of the sweetest and kindest and also really funny and awesome people I've ever met. And uh, yeah. we correspond a lot to sending each other memes at this point. So, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I like about the actual show? It's, 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 it's very uh, normalized, the family, you know, the dynamics. And it's great to, to see issues like mental health and and. and um, you know, drink issues and everything like, like like that because, you know, I know it's all about super, Superman, but I, I I'm just loving the storylines and as you said, the writing is absolutely superb, and I know there's a lot of um, nervous people out there of what to expect uh, out of the show, and we're pleasantly very pleased because it's just awesome. I mean, what's your favourite scene to actually shoot uh, so far that you can tell me about? Well, to shoot, well, the the, in, the scene in which uh, Jordan kind of blows up at Clark in episode one was extremely intense. So I was in a kind of afraid mental state that day just because I was kind of in character the whole day. Now, I'm, I'm not a method, you know, but like I, it, it does emotionally tax you. Uh, but that was really, really cool. It was one of our first days and they lifted the truck on a crane and then put Tyler under it, stop the roll, put Tyler under it, strapped him to the truck and lifted the entire thing up to the air and then had a crane go up to him 30 feet in the air and get a close up of him with the sun going behind him. Meanwhile, we're nearby a bird sanctuary, it was migratory season, the entire sky went black with a flock of birds. It's the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. I didn't realize that they could be just deafening. Um, it was There was so much syzygy in it all mm. that was just beautiful uh so i have to say that was my favorite although for the character i think one of my favorites uh in those first five was in episode four by the bonfire i think seeing someone who's normally used to being an outcast and miserable uh, not the bonfire but the fireplace uh mm. seeing someone say i'm happy here i don't want to change things <laughs> yeah. that's just a beautiful little moment that they put in the next thing I want to talk about is, sorry, I'm going to cough now. <coughs> it's okay. I've been tested. I haven't got COVID. Um, oh, oh my God. Are you getting from yeah, the UK? Quick, quick, you, you quick. Whoa. Yeah, whoa. the UK variant. The UK variant. Are you get that um, variant coming from the speakers? <laughs> You'll well, be safe, I'm sure. Right. I'm sure. <laughs> the next thing I want to talk about, Alex, is, is excellent. Oh, 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 oh. Is um, your mum. Okay, because behind, um, you know, every young actor, they need fam fa family behind them. Uh, you hear so many horror stories of child actors uh, becoming divas and demanding stuff. Does your mom keep you grounded? Does your mom keep you sort of in your place sort of thing? I mean, you seem so down to earth and so lovely. She's obviously done a very, very good job. Uh, and me as a parent as well, we want our kids to grow up with, you know, kindness in, in, in their heart. And so far, I've seen nothing but kindness from you. Um, but does she every now and again give you a clip behind the ear and tell you off? Well, of course. But, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, generally on set, I have um, I, I have a strict decorum just in how I also, I, I, I'm extremely serious about that. That's the beautiful thing about my mom is that she finds in people their passion and their, uh, and, and what makes them want to live and be happy. And she just amplifies it in everyone. And I think it's really beautiful of her. And, you know, um, being out here, uh, coming from where I come from and being out here was a very 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 big shift and without her i don't know how i would have done it because she has been there for me and i've been there for her and not only that now we have um 
the means uh, from me booking the show to um, do a lot more. And uh, so for Mother's Day this year, I planned a whole big day and it, it just, uh, I was watching that Elvis documentary on Netflix and the whole first part is about how he built Graceland for his parents. And I, I know I'm not Elvis and I'm not going to build Graceland, but at least I get to not uh, yet. at least do something really nice. And so, you know, that, that, that's, that's, that's the whole spiel. She's, she's just awesome. And she's right there. So I'm sure she's <laughs> blushing. At the moment, and so am I. Um, oh, bless you. You're very, very lucky uh, to have a son, mom. Uh, if you can hear me <laughs> like that, you really are. Um, so uh, before we wind down this one wonderful interview, uh, I wanted to ask, before obviously taking the show, were you a fan of Superman? Before the show, uh, uh, when I was two years old, uh, two, four, four years old, my mom, that's why you need your mom also. Uh, <laughs> the, when I was four years old, one of my earliest memories is me being Superman. My head was my, for Halloween. My hair was jet straight at that point. And I was going in the mirror with a big bundle of wax, trying to get the little curl to go right. If that answers your question. I mean, I was also, <laughs> I, I've always been a giant nerd. I've been, oh, wait, we got, we got pictures. We have evidence. Oh, wow. so here's my brother, Max. Here's one of our uh, friends, Morgan. And here I am standing strong. Little do I know that I have. This is from an old camera, so I have red eyes. You know, there's wow, a lot that of expression. That, that I can still do it now if you want. Wait, I, I got one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spot on. In fact, if they ever, if they ever get a, a super suit, that's what I'm doing immediately. Well, I, uh, you know what? You never, you never know. With the powers, you never know. There might be a time when you don the cape. And uh, you become su Superman, but aren't you glad that that you know? Even though you went for the part of Jordan, uh, part of Jonathan, you know, you've now got Jordan. You've now got superpowers. So, which is which is pretty cool. And obviously, since the show has been on, it's been so popular. How has everything been with social media? Because that must be absolutely crazy. Uh, has anyone given you any advice on how to handle your social media and the fans? I have a strange relationship with social media, as anyone who's on my social media can tell. <laughs> uh, I generally don't like things. Maybe it's me rebelling against my mom. My mom is a, a, a news producer. She used to be in the world of local news and, and, and that, I think national news. Well, you know, she, she's, she's, but she's a producer, so she likes to put together things. I think I'm exactly the opposite. So generally, I kind of just post whatever I want and I try to connect with people on a personal level. Uh, I, I very rarely try to appease anyone with it. I post, you know, I think, I think the real, you know what, they, 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 they let me take over the official CW Superman and Lois account. And they, yeah, uh, Instagram account. Yeah. Oh my God. They, they, uh, so they said, um, you know, you got to post like nine, nine, up to nine posts, this many story posts. And everyone that was doing it was doing all these, like, you know, they were putting together these beautiful packages of whatever. And I, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I go in there. I'm like, you know, he doesn't really tell me what to post. So I, I go in there. The first thing I do is just a picture of Danny DeVito and just write DeVito. <laughs> yeah. and, and in little writing, I go underneath it goes, uh, this bears no relevance to Superman and Lois. And then I see all this chatter online of like, oh my God, is he coming back as the penguin? I'm like, oh, what did I start? And then they're like, no, they just let a 17 year old in charge of the account. That's so funny. I got the DeVito chain going now. If anyone sees this, you have to go to my social media. Look at like one of the latest pictures I've posted is just Danny DeVito. And uh, I started a DeVito chain. It has 100 people on the DeVito chain now. So honestly, I'm pretty happy. But awesome. uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to talk about it with also just very briefly. Also, I, I do a lot of Instagram lives just to in literally at 3 in the morning to annoy everyone, I'm sure, that gets their phone buzzing that forgot to turn it off now that I'm thinking about it. But... Uh, it, it's mainly uh, I like to talk to people. Uh, I, I'm very different from my character, as I think you guys can tell at this point. And uh, you know, people go to bed uh, three hours earlier in New York, uh, where I'm from. So it gets to a late hour, and there are days when I don't talk to anyone, and I really want to talk to people. So why not reach the other side of the world that normally doesn't get reached out to? Because you know, they're asleep while we're awake, and why not? Mm. 
And then under your name is is obviously where uh, people can follow you on Instagram and Twitter. So I want everyone to get on there and check out the Danny DeVito. It's excellent. It really, <laughs> really is. Um, how how are Bitsy and and Tyler as 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 on screen parents? Because they seem lovely. They really, really do. Uh, I mean, what 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 are they like to work with? Oh, it, you know, they're definitely parents. You know, <laughs> you know, they're like the, the, you know, B- B- Bitsy is so much like a mom uh, the whole time. You know, there's, she's always like that force of like. Um, uh, of just, she's also in, in wickedly intelligent as well, which mm. is just adds to that fuel of like she's the mom. And then Tyler's like the cool dad, you know. Tyler's chilling. He, he's he's messing around, you know. Uh, I I just I sincerely like them both so much. Um, Tyler and Bitsy have both been so unbelievably kind to Jordan and I uh, throughout this whole process. They've been giving us advice on how to do it. You know, Tyler's been around the block many, many, many times on many different types of shows, styles of show. And he was also a child actor. So he mm. can really understand and relate to me, especially because I'm the only other child actor on the show besides uh, Jocelyn who plays Sophie, who's uh, not on it as much. Uh, we really relate on that very specific level, which is, it's, it's really great. It's really, really great. Yeah. And before we say our goodbyes, have you kept anything from the show yet uh, as like a memento? Or you're not allowed to do that? Um, (laughs) You know, (laughs) actually, um, I gave my one-time girlfriend uh, a rock from Schuster Mines, teasing her that I kissed Indy. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, That that is what comes to mind. Um, uh, yeah, I, I I think that's mainly it. You know, it's it, I'm sure I'll be collecting plenty of stuff over the time. You know, my, my character dresses so dark uh, that I usually dress so dark that I'm sure we, we've gotten mixed up in the clothing so many times. You know, there, it, you know, there, there are things here and there. Oh, bless you. Well, you know what, Alex, I'm so looking forward to the rest of uh, this season. And it's so exciting to to know that we're going to get a second season because there's nothing worse than enjoying a season and then that that will be it. So I'm excited that we get a second season. We, don't to, get, uh, we didn't get Freaks and Geeks. We didn't... They, <laughs> what's they that? made that incredible... Freaks and Geeks, it was, they made this incredible, like ridiculously amazing show and it was one season. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, the, well, the thing yeah. is, I just don't get it. The fans are, are, are behind like shows like The Expanse. Which I think is awesome. Which they tried to cancel, and and um, you know the news that obviously Supergirl is 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 stopping, and and we need some something to grab on onto, and and that's what the great thing about Superman and Lois is. Uh, it's it's just fantastic, and you're doing a great job. Thank you so much for playing such an awesome character, and I cannot wait to see you get more powers and get with Sarah Cushing. And um, find some happiness. Find some happiness. Confirm or deny anything. (laughs) 